What's up guys, Max from MaxWorks here, and today we're going to see if we can make this motor fire off by focusing on the ignition components. Um, now I just got the carb kits in, it's going to take us a little time, we're going to do the carburetors in another video, but in theory by the end of this video all of our ignition stuff should be in, we should have the motor uh, turning over uh, and running off, starting off a battery. Let's just jump into it and uh, start by replacing all of the ignition coils. So our next step here is we're gonna replace the coils and I'll put a link to these down below. I just got these off Amazon. I think they're something like 15 bucks a piece. And so let's take a look at, at uh, what you get for that. So as you can see, these are very similar to the coils that are on the motor and I'll show you guys in a second. Basically you have this large ground fixture. You have your coil right here and you're gonna have a positive and a negative on the coil. Um, and these will correlate to those distribution blocks on the motor. I'll show you guys in a second. Now, in addition to that, <clears throat> the coils are basically one part with the spark plug wires uh, on this kind of design. So let's see what else comes in our, our little baggie here. So we have a boot, we have this kind of spring clip. And these spring clips are kind of an old school way of doing this. This mounts, this is the head of the spark plug. These are our old spark plugs and you can see they have a pretty pretty big dome up here and so this is basically how it attaches. These are kind of a pain to deal with but basically these two little teeth uh, need to pierce the spark plug wire and go into the metal core. So in the end when it's done it'll look something like this coming into this boot. So if this is the boot, this is the end the spark plug goes into, this is kind of what you're gonna see uh, when you're done. There's also a protective sleeve that comes with it. This will go on our spark plug wire. And on the coil side, you can see where the coil screws in, there is a, a uh, threaded like wood screw type deal. And what you'll do is you'll actually just take this and thread it in here when you're done. Uh, and that'll give you basically electric connectivity. This is a very old school way of doing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble the wire part of it here on the bench and then we will um, go and install the coil on the motor. And then obviously there's four coils, so we gotta install all four. So when it comes to assembling these, you basically just force the wire through uh, our little spark plug boot. I like to trim back a little bit of the jacket here. And you can do this with a knife, you can do this with some clippers, you just kinda wanna do that. And now you can see there's uh, some of the copper core and the way that this works is I like to fold this back like this so we have that and then you drive the bottom pin through uh, to the copper and then I usually take this stretch it out and then drive it uh, through the top as well into the copper so now you can see both of the both of the the uh, sharp tabs are there, and then what I like to do is I like to take this and wrap the protruding copper around the spring. So this just gives us an extra little bit of connectivity in case one of our spikes missed. You can basically just slide this all the way through, and boom. And now, obviously, I don't think you're gonna be able to see inside the boot, but if you can, the spark plug will now sit and it's perfectly locked in there. So now that part's done, and on this end, all you have to do is uh, thread it in there. But I normally won't do that until I install these on the motor and then I'll thread the wires in and then I'll lock the wires on. Uh, and obviously, don't forget to include your little protective sleeve here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make the other three of these wires and then we'll go to the motor and uh, get everything installed. So previously we had removed kind of some of these uh, covers and stuff to gain access here. So to replace these coils, um, this is a 3 8 uh, socket. There's three bolts that hold them in. As you can see, one is longer. That is the one that comes right here that falls underneath our uh, ground strap. So I set these aside. And now we can kind of slide the coil out of the way. Um, we've already disconnected this. This is our number one coil. 
and you can see it comes with this little clip right here we're going to try to save this there we go is going to come through right over here it would seem so as you can see i'm kind of pulling on it and it's uh it's going to be right here so we're going to have to slide that one through this is if we look back at our our cover here this is orange coil number one and number three so this is our cylinder number one so we're going to remove this screw right here just a flathead screw and when you remove this you want to make sure to save rubber grommet right here because we're going to need this on our next coil so we're going to take this we're going to just slide uh, this grommet off it can be a little sticky but thankfully on mine the rubber is still pretty soft and so we're able to just kind of slide it up and over the uh, ring terminal and then we'll slide it onto the new one so we'll set that aside slip this out of here so now our whole coil uh, assembly is off so what I like to do is I have a stainless steel brush here what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean off all the places where it grounds to the motor so all these bolt holes we're just gonna take them and clean them up make sure that uh, the coil can make a good ground just snip this wire and on the coil as you can see there's a long wire and a short wire the short wire is just a ground it's going to just go underneath that long bolt that we talked about like that and on this side you can see the coils kind of point up and they face away this way so the coil will boil bolt in like this and remember we have one longer bolt and that bolt has to go through in here and as you can see it's actually used to retain a clip down here as well and then our two shorter bolts go into the other holes right there and right there so we're going to go ahead and so now our coil, coil is in place and we're going to run this just right over here and before you do that it's very important to go ahead and fit this little rubber grommet guy fight you a little bit probably but there we go so now we're just going to run this wire along here through here and you install these kind of crimp side up so that goes there we have our screw right here so i like to put the screw through that and then go ahead and tighten this down and once you do that we can push this grommet down and make sure that it sits firmly in its little channel right there so that's our one coil replaced and now what i've done is i've added one of these from my grommet kit this did not come with the coils but this is how uh, these are secured right here so we're gonna add this this one's kind of rust the other one's rusted off this one's kind of destroyed maybe we'll probably zip time in place but that's just kind of how that lives don't forget your little protective shield that slides on and what you really just want to do is you want to line this up with the middle with the screw that I showed you guys earlier and then you just thread it in and you basically just keep threading it until it screws all the way down want to go on any further and then if you're able to manage to save your little clip put the little clip back on identifies this as cylinder one so now we're going to be able to use that right there all right so now that we got all four coils on here let me kind of talk about uh what happened so on this side i had to remove this uh cover piece up here to access these bolts these are all three eighths bolts here's our uh two and four coil our two and four cylinders we put new grommets right here and then these guys will basically go into spark plugs like that and that um, these wires run under here there's a nut down here that has to be secured and then these are your uh, number two and number four coils and if you look at our handy dandy diagram you can see coil number four coil number two then there's a black and white sensor right there over here um, this is a ground that goes to here which ties into this piece uh, this wire disintegrated so I replaced it with a new ground strap over here we had another ground that was disintegrated this originally ran to the head uh, this bolt snapped this bolt was already snapped so I decided to just run it down to the case here this should 
all be fine because over here we added a ground strap from up here to the case over here and there is no ground strap on this head so i think it's fine and then here we had to add these two coils these wires run down here through here when you remove these two bolts this piece drops out lets you fish the coil wires through here there they are coils one and three right there and uh this piece right here is pretty much completely rotted away but we went ahead and put on new uh new grommets and spark boots anyway so there's number one and there's number uh three and now what we can do is we can put this cover back on and i think uh, i went and bought a battery so uh maybe we'll see if this thing will crank with battery power here in a second i got this sauced up with pb blaster basically we have a starter solenoid here the starter solenoid works because we are hooked up basically to the battery in and out here this little guy right here is my diy starter switch basically we're just jumpering from positive to the positive log on the starter relay and the problem here is this is supposed to fire up so initially i couldn't get this gear to fire up and engage now we got this sauced up and hammered on a little bit it seems to be engaging so check this out the problem is it's now not dropping back down uh, and maybe that's just a matter because the engine's not spinning and so with the force of the flywheel it'll start dropping down but we're definitely gonna give this thing a little more sauce over the next few days and see if we can get this to uh to loosen up but check it out motor cranks over it sounds pretty good and now if we really want to we can just do a quickie compression test so i think uh maybe that's what we'll do next just to check out how this thing is doing so we just grew up in a big way i went up there the keys in the ignition i turned the key from the crank or from the ignition and the motor cranked over which means all the wiring between here and there seems to be pretty good which is fantastic and then what we did was we put one of these old spark plugs in here and i don't know if the camera is going to be able to catch this but if we crank it over it is throwing sparkies uh which means that in theory if we had spark plugs and stuff we could actually fire this motor up and so what i'm going to do now is we're going to hook up the compression tester and uh we're going to see what kind of compression we get on these cylinders i'm going to see if i can do this the old school way without actually uh having to screw them in every time Ooh, scared me so just shy of 120 um i don't know what this thing's supposed to have but it seems a little low to me but maybe not the end of the world let's try the others the trick here is it's not so much what is the compression number as much as it is uh that it's the same on all the cylinders So this one's a little lower, this one's about a hundred. It's about 90. This one's closer to 120. So I won't say it's the greatest, but uh, it should be good enough to run. And look, we finally cranked this thing over enough that uh, you can see this is falling down on its own. So, so I ended up tracking these down, these are original champion uh ul 77 v spark plugs i had to get these off ebay these are like new old stock they don't really make these anymore um but it's hard to find these no uh no protrusion spark plugs so i'm gonna get these unboxed and uh, we're gonna get them installed in the motor so this right here is premix gasoline we're gonna squirt some into the intake uh and crank it over and see if uh, we can get this thing to fire up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just squirt some gas back in here. This is your intake. Okay, after much screwing around, we've got the carbs kind of generally open. Um, it's kind of hard to get everything lined up exactly how I want but now with the carburetors fully open a bunch of ether squirted in we'll set the bypass on the jump block and well that's it for this episode definitely sounds like it's firing up which is cool um, obviously 
it only seems to want to run on ether, which is probably a function of the fact the carbs are kind of sticky and, and have no fuel in them. Um, also, our jumper cable solution for the battery is not very good. So I'm gonna have to run new battery cables into the boat. I knew that was gonna have to happen anyway, uh, but I was kind of trying to be lazy and, and get around it for now. Uh, in the next episode, we're probably gonna be rebuilding the carburetors and uh, figuring out what's going wrong with those. And then uh, we'll see if we can put this all together and kind of make the boat uh, run with some earmuffs, some water, and see if we can make it run uh, for more than just a second. I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. There's going to be more boat videos coming up. And so in the next episode, we're probably going to tackle carburetors.